Yo, what's up guys and welcome to another video on the channel, let's say. This is not a walkthrough Wednesday. Um, it is the project walkthrough of Battlefield, but you knew that by the title. Um, this is something different from the Patreon stuff. Now, some of you, <laughs> I think all of you have realised if you're watching this video that I've been doing Patreon exclusive videos for the past, I don't know, f three or four months now. Um, so only the preview comes onto my YouTube channel, so at least you get to see a little bit. Um, but the full video is only available for my patrons, so that won't change. Um, basically what I want to do is every, probably two videos a month maybe, um, full videos on the channel so you guys can learn from it and stuff if you can't be um, a Patreon, right? But the Patreon stuff is specific questions, so if you want to know how to do a certain thing within one of my tracks, then you would have to jump in the Discord chat, Discord server, and ask me that question, then I could cover it in a video. Um, but this stuff's going to be more general, but at least I can give you guys some content, because I know not all of you guys can, can pay um, for Patreon and stuff, and I, I, I completely get that. I've seen a lot of negative comments from some of you guys on there. On, uh, on the YouTube comments saying like I should do stuff for free but I've been doing that for two years there's two years worth of videos some of some of the old stuff isn't too great but I, I've put two years of content out and um, now I just wanted to make it a lot more personal and to do that um, I have to create a, a unique kind of community which is what we've got over on discord uh, and patreon and that way I can get like direct conversation with you guys with youtube i can't really connect as well you know um you can just post comments and, and someone can like it whereas nowadays with the, with discord we can actually talk about it talk more deeply what else do you actually want to see within this tutorial and stuff and i i just like the way it's working i i think it's a, been a great decision um but i do want to give back to you guys because oh, I'm not a dick basically I, I, I want to help you guys out as much as possible um so we're going to jump into the full project um of ba uh, battlefield now it was called take on the world i had to change the change the project name because basically i, I took a vocal from uh, a vocalist that basically vocals vocalists will send out big lists of vocals that they've got and you just decide which one you want then when it came to actually discussing the terms for the track it was just too expensive the, the upfront fee just didn't make it worthwhile, especially for an EDM, a big room track, you know, you're not going to recoup much of the, the fee on that. Um, so then I, I started thinking, like, what else do I want to do? Do I want to leave it as an instrumental? And this is what this is. This is the instrumental of the track. Um, I can show you the vocals in a later, later video, maybe. Um, but David processes the vocals really well, so there's not much I needed to do on top. Um, but yeah, we. I was already talking to David about a, a follow up for Tokyo anyway, um, but I thought I may as well send him this one just in case he's vibing it. And because it is different to Tokyo, so you can't really class it as a follow up, but um, he liked it and he wrote something really, really good for it. It really suits the track. Uh, so yeah, it, it worked out really well, and I, I wouldn't have had it any other way. I think it's just worked out the best possible way for everyone. And this is what I came up with. I will say this is probably one of the most creative tracks I've ever made. I think production-wise, it's one of the best I've ever done. It might not be to everyone's tastes, and for me, the BPM feels a little slow. Um, as you know, I've been working on a sound for the past six months, and this could be my last 128 BPM track. Never say never, um, but for at least the near future, I do want to progress into the kind of harder sound. Um, so this is, I think this is a perfect track to go out on, uh, out on the, on the 128 BPM, um, kind of trend. It's, it's time for me to move on with the sound and I think this is a good, a good final track. Um, so yeah, let's, let if you haven't already heard it, go on Spotify and please stream it. Um, but yeah, your, your support on this one's been great. A lot of people actually like it. Some people don't like it. Um, but yeah. Let's jump into the drop.
So that is the, the the vibe of the track. You've got a lot of stuff going on here. Um, I know it's messy and I am trying to better myself. I am trying to work with colors and with organization. But for me, when I've got an idea, I want to get it out on the paper so fast. So I don't worry about the uh, the neatness of the project. And I know that sounds selfish because you know I, I do videos a lot. So I should be thinking about you guys, but I'm I'm not really the most of you guys know I'm not really the technical producer in the studio I'm just a guy who liked music listened to it a lot and learned how to do FL Studio well you know I, I see it as like a video game you play a video game over and over again you become like an, a pretty good expert at it you know and I think I've played the game of FL Studio for like eight years now um, and I've gotten pretty good at it so um, that's why I'm work so messy but I will try and, and explain things as best I can uh, so so you can make sense of it all I think we start with drop one and then we go into drop two then the breakdowns and stuff I want to keep this as short and as sweet as possible because I think it could go could go very long because it's quite a big project um, so what can we start with I think the drop leads are the most important thing this is one of the best drop leads I've ever ever created um, and by created I mean like layers and stuff like that so let's start with the main sound, which is it's honestly the, one of the, the sexiest flute sounds you'll find. Uh, and it's the Irish flute from Contact. That's not the main sound, it is the, I think it's the Ney, no the Caval. This is the main sound. So as you can see, it's not the smoothest um, because with contact it's sample based, I think, sample based. So it is just like a one shot sample. Uh, that's why it's not super smooth between the transition of notes, right? Um, then backed up, you've got this Irish flute sound, which you already heard. So then I thought it sounds super nice and super edgy and very different and very natural, but I wanted that EDM kind of energy in there. And you've got that real click that the original contact sound doesn't have because you know it's, it's a flute, you can't get that much transient on it unless you process it a lot. Um, but yeah, together it sounds pretty, pretty tough, I think. Bit of white noise in there as well, just to, to ramp up that energy. With these gaps, I knew I could kind of automate the reverb a little bit in there just to fill up those gaps, but I did need something else because the energy felt a little bit like lackluster, so I added in these like ravey sounds. <laughs> And I think that really completes the drop. I'm, I'm really like obsessed with those kind of old ravey sounds. So let's look at the processing. Uh, don't be alarmed when you see the EQs. I think I had to like go crazy boosting like 12 dBs on the high end because with this, this flute sample, you know, it could have been recorded, I don't know, 20 years ago and the recording might not be that clean. So it is just a, a contact, um, I think it's in the contact factory library and you'll find it in like world sounds, reeds and flutes, I think. And it's, it's one of those, the Caval is the main sound. Um, so let's jump over. And of course, I don't even need to explain these to the Camel Crusher, tiny bit of tube distortion that I don't think I've even, I just reduced the compressor maybe. Uh, we've got the blood overdrive, very minimal on this actually. But but you will hear that it makes a difference. Let's check everything off and see how beautiful the sound sounds by itself. It's it's nice, but it's flat, right? So we need to really slam that and boost it and compress it. Bit of delay just to give it that epic feel and just make it sound less like a sample. With those settings there, as you can see, we've got the imager, stereo images, make it a little bit wider, so it's just, yeah, more of a drop lead. Got transient master to get that click up. 
And the other thing I like about this is the sustain knob. You can just reduce it, which means that the, the notes will feel shorter. Uh, and I, if you just really listen to it, you'll hear that it gets more short and snappy and jumpy. See how it's just more jumpy and I think it just really adds to the energy there. But an endless smile so I can automate the reverb. Uh, let's see that now. There was yeah, this is this is quite an old track, so for a long time I was using Endless Smile as the reverb for my leads because I just felt it was better than the one I had, which was Fruity Reverb 2. Uh, but now since I am using Art Acoustic Reverb, so I've got uh, the leads I'm making now so much more powerful. Um, but back then I was using Endless Smile as my main reverb. Um, but yeah, it gives you a nice little automation on this and you can just get a little bit more movement in the, in the dropout here. See, it's like it's creating kind of a reverse sound. I, I love that, and it gives it so much energy. Then we've got some EQ. Now I've boosted the volume because contact sounds notoriously are quite quiet. Most of them, little spike in the mids because I just want to give a little bit more body. Um, boosting the highs as well around 5k. This is bad. Shouldn't do this. I should be cutting this completely because some of the signal still comes through. Um, next one, we've got filter. That's just that's just build up stuff. And we have another EQ, um, doing pretty much the same thing. I obviously wasn't satisfied with that, so I had to go back. But it's a lot more crispy now. Side chains quite loose, I think. Because the notes are very on the kick, you'll see here, this is a kick. This is a kick. This is a kick, this is a kick, and all the notes, most of the notes are actually on the kick, so I needed quite a loose sidechain for, for the actual lead to be like heard, right? Um, a heavy sidechain would mean that the, the melody would just get lost um, in the sidechain, basically. So that's the processing, quite simple, I think. Um, plugins that everyone can get access to. It was just about finding this next level sound, and it's going to be hard for me to get this sound into my new sound kind of incorporate it um, because it's very ethnic but I think it's one of the best lead sounds that I've ever been um, produced in the studio I guess or, or layered up so together everything sounds like this see you, you probably don't hear the EDM lead in the mix but it actually really adds to the energy and just fills up that space uh, so let's just listen I, I'll let it play out sorry for, sorry for interrupting you guys so with the rave stabs we're just going to listen to these by themselves and they are processed a little bit differently how sexy is this uh, nexus skin i don't know why this is so big nexus has never usually been this large um but yeah it's a big hoover sound from the progressive tech house pack I grabbed this one because I wanted some old ravey sounds. Uh, everybody's using EDM sounds, so so why not try and use the old ravey stuff? Um, and I think it worked really well for this kind of sound. It, it's a little bit different. I think if I use the EDM sound or a pluck, it just would make it sound too EDM. I think this makes it sound a little bit more cool. Got Camel Crusher, Blood Overdrive, probably the same settings. Got uh, same stereo imaging. I think I just copy and pasted, yeah. Um, but actually just reduce some of the EQ I didn't need to make this as like um, as many highs in this because it's it's a, a Nexus preset that was made probably a year ago so it's been processed quite a lot itself a little bit more sidechain on that than the main lead um, because there is some notes that, are, that, that so it's not really on the kick drum it's actually never on the kick drum so I, I need a bit more of a tight sidechain to help it like lock into the mix a little bit tighter and that, that's that's literally the the drop lead. Uh, I'm very proud of this one. Um, it just shows that you can get like a unique sound without being a, a sound designer. You know, I didn't spend 12 hours in the studio making this. I just thought 
where can I get a sound which is is cool and different? You know, I knew fl- at the t- I think this was like a six month old track when I made it six months ago. So I knew flutes were kind of the in thing. So I, I was thinking, where can I get a flute? Did a little bit of research. Went in contact, which I haven't used much at all, and uh, ended up coming up with that. So let me see, what's this? That's just the mix level. So I really went and increased the amount of endless smile a lot here. And you can hear that with the movement. Without them, it sounds pretty dead and flat. So now we need a kick, right? I I had an original kick in here, but I ended up changing it just before I submitted the the final uh, mix to Revealed. I just, I wasn't happy with it for some reason. It felt very flat. Um, So I found this one. This is a really great kick. Shout out to Mr. Black. Uh, This kick's really dope. It's got a really nice transient, really nice body as well. It's got quite a mono sound to it as well, so you can really keep it down the center of the, of the track and have everything else stereo. We've got a top kick as well from, from the man himself, Kashmir. One of my personal favorites. Turned it off, probably. I think actually this was for the old kick, but I, I guess it gives a little bit of a, a, a phase clash there with the original because maybe he used a, a cashmere top kick as well and if you add your own cashmere top kick it's going to phase so the bass line i think is the next most important thing this bit this this is actually how the track started right i found this bass line um in a sample pack and i'm not sure the name of it now uh but let's just check it how it sounds straight out of the pack I can't describe it, it's got such a weird edge and it's so different that I knew I knew I had to do something also super unique on top of it really to make this track like, whoa, this is quite cool and different. So together we have this. And I love that this bass line kind of steps outside of the norm. It's actually got quite a nice stereo um, field on it you can hear it's like parts of the bass line in, in the stereo field and I, I like that i know it's not the norm you like to keep your basses um your sub bass is like really mono but it, it just i don't know I, I i like the way it sounded and nobody's really complained about that yet um yeah it's it's par- parametric eq central over here i did make it slightly more mono um because i did feel it was like too wide but i have left it still quite wide and um, the eq dipped some of the highs um, I don't know why the end of smiles there. Uh, a little tiny, tiny boost in the sub, and I've, I've cut off the unnecessary stuff below it, just in case they didn't when they made the loop. Um, again, boosted the sub, then the bass was happy with it. Obviously, there's two EQs that I just turned off because I obviously didn't use them. And again, just this is must be OCD, just trying to clean everything as much as possible. But together we have this. <laughs> To back up this, the, the bass line, um, what I did was I went for this pluck, which was also from the sample pack, but from a different construction kit. But it was so cool and I knew I had to use it. actually hear it from this this is what i originally had only this kind of as the fill but then i realized that this was such a cool like attack um sound that i could use it on top of the existing bass line i love that sound so much so cool um and that's that's pretty much the basis of the track um now we've got to add the ear candy stuff that really fills up the drop because right now it is it's very minimalistic so let's see what else i added so i have these bass wobbles that's from a um a virtual riot uh sample pack i actually used this wob this wobble sound in in close to me i think 
a free track I dropped a few years ago. Um, but it's such a cool sound as well. Keeping it every every bar or so just to keep that energy constantly coming back. We've got this bass wobble, uh, it's like a, a gritty growl sound. This is it's just an Nexus sound. And it's the NAS bass number one. Uh, I'm guessing it's from EDM3 or EDM4. Uh, but it really suited the, the main stab. And actually, I see this, e this automation as well. I think what I did with the leads here, um, because it's a gap and only sidechain in this part, you see there was no lead there, it's only the sidechain from the lead, so I think what I did there is... Let's just see what the main... Um, it's been like quite a while since I opened this. Um, so the leads are on, makes the track 5. Yeah, so what I've done is use stereo imaging via this button. This button you can make it mono or stereo. And as you can see, I've opened up the EQ, so it became quite stereo, I think. Let's just double check. See how it opens up, so the reverb becomes very stereo, so it really takes over the space that the lead left, because the lead isn't there anymore, it's only the reverb tail, so I had to boost the stereo field of the reverb tail to kind of imitate the lead. Just to, to keep it keep it full. This is this is just the nerd shit that you don't really don't really need to put in your tracks. I would say this is just this is just. Do you know when you get a cool idea? When I get a cool idea, anyway, I go crazy on the the, the technical stuff. I did it with Amsterdam. I was really impressed what I did with Amsterdam. Uh, I did loads of cool stuff in that because I felt the idea early on. Um, so that's pretty much it. We've got the the, the bass stabs. You know the the the. What what's the word for them? What what's the word for this? Common. It's the most common sound. You know, this is the most overused sound in EDM. But it, it adds that energy, and it's just another little piece of the puzzle which fills up the whole track. What I did was I also duplicated it and clicked reverse, so it became a sweep into the next one. It's all about transitions, making it smooth. Works so well, reverse sounds with actual automation of e uh, reverb. When you have those things together, it sounds so smooth and so safe. Um, we have this Bangra shout. You can tell this track's very ethnic themed. Then we have it comes in again. What else did we add? Now we have this sound, um, a revealed sound. I'm not sure actually, I thought it was the, the sound of a revealed pack. Um, pretty nice sound actually, it's just another little piece of the puzzle. Just a subtle thing there, you can see I panned it slightly to the right so it doesn't get in the way of the other stabs, it can have its own space. We've got this little uh, side trance bass plug. One is panned left and the other is panned right. I probably didn't hear that in the track but you, if you listen to it really closely you can hear it. Let's turn the lead off so you can really hear the effect there, I think it's another cool little thing. Nice little thing there. We've got the vocal, I love this vocal, also from that same sample pack. It, I think this really makes the drop, I think it's such a big component. Got this little uh, hi-hat, which acts as a white noise kind of stuff. And we've got this sound from the fill um, and it actually this loop had a really nice reverb tail section in it the spinning sound and I just used that and reversed it so it would also act you can if you struggle to get nice reverb automation with your leads 
take loops from uh, Splice, which have done it really well, and just take that part, put it in key, and it's gonna do the same kind of thing. See, it actually also sounds like a vocal reverse as well. And that's pretty much it. We've got the white nose as well. Can't forget that. Then it stops. I think that's a cool thing rather than just let it tail throughout the whole, whole drop. And then together we have this. Then we have to change something. With EDM you have to keep it fresh. Nice tight little clap there from Jordy Daz Old Pack. And a hi-hat as well, I think. Yeah. Why not change the rhythm of the clap, you know? Do these things because it's just... Man, EDM tracks have just been so overdone that you, sometimes you have to really just do something different every now and again just to keep the listener kind of engaged. Then we've got the fill section. Just an atmospheric fill there just to, to kind of give some tension, I guess. Cool little synth shot, very ravey synth shot there. I think we'll have a big snare here. From Rude Lies, from our track um, Shutdown. Shout out to him because it's a tight, tight big sub uh, snare. You can see how I've added a synth on top of it because Pride of Snares are overdone, so why not make your synth Pride of Snare? I'm, I'm a genius, you know. We've got this Quintino sound. Don't know where I got this from. But I, I know you can actually, I actually have a pack in Nexus which is just full of cowbells, so. So we've got that. The bass, as you heard before, it has this nice kind of tail off. As you can see, the, the, the low end gets decreased in this section here. So I just left that the way it was. I've got this uh, loop as well. Which I increased the and the smile, the reverb on it because as you can see I had to cut it because it wouldn't go well with the big snare, it would clash so I had to reverb so that it didn't just end suddenly, I wanted it to tail off. We've got another sound in here, as you can see I just I add sound on top of sound on top of sound, as long as it all fits rhythmically, it's it's that's how you make cool fills. You got this like vocal sound here. And then you can see, um, Oh man, I, I went I went hard on this track. Look at this, I'm reversing stuff. You, you can see like, this is the thing with me. If I really feel an idea, I can go like crazy, crazy detailed in it. So that's just a, a Kashmir sound, which I reversed. Because why not, you know? Works really well. Got this Kashmir impact. I, I'm not gonna keep saying Kashmir's name. You guys get it. <laughs> Got this lovely little timbale fill. And this is what I mean, if you've got a theme, you can really go hard on the theme. Maybe you wanna make a techno inspired big room track, go and splice and get as many techno samples as you can. I wanted to do an ethnic inspired track, so I just waited, you know who's pack, you know? Um, and then this reverse sound as well. And this is a, kind of a war horn, but it's a little bit different. It's not from you know who's pack. It's it's different, which just makes it. It's noticeable. I think you can hear it's not just a war horn. You know the, the standard one everyone uses, but together the fill I, I think sounds really nice, really dope. Um, didn't need to add anything else in here. I think this was enough. Then we go back into the drop. Um, the lead has some EQ, I believe. Um, I think I'm just decreasing the low end of the track and also the reverb, uh, the, the volume is actually decreased. Just so the other components of the fill can actually be heard. See how the thin just fe the, the lead feels like it gets thinner? That's because I've automated the, the reverb, uh, the EQ, the low end EQ gets gradually reduced. Let me see if I can show you. It just allows the, the, the lead to be taken away smoothly and not just volume automated, you know? It's a little bit better than that. So in the second part, we need to do something different. So what am I gonna do? I added some drums. As I said before, I've got an ethnic theme, so let's add some ethnic drums. Some like house claps. 
which I removed. That's embarrassing. I think it just killed the energy. I wanted like a more big room energy here. Hi hats. See how everything has to fit rhythmically. If it doesn't fit rhythmically, it's gonna sound horrible. See, this is a nice vibe, right? It all, it all fits. It's, it's quite ethnic as well. I've got this sound. Lovely little house hat. See, th this could have been the drop by itself, you know, like a little housey banger. We've got these shuffle hats, I think. The reason these are so good is because they have a shuffle on them. They have like, they're slightly off the grid. So they're not fighting for space with the other ones. Vibes. Then we've got this, um, love this thing. Just a cool little thing there. Then we have, yeah, we'll come on to that. Um, that's something I thought was really cool as well. That, that's another thing which I did, which was kind of against the norm. We have this big old school drum. I know it's for, been used in quite a few old big room tracks. OTT on this one, just to give it a little bit more presence there and just cut the lows out of it because I don't want it to clash with that bass. But I actually did a triplet rhythm here. And my bass line isn't triplet. So technically it should really clash here, but I think it worked kind of well in the end. Let's just hear it with the kick so you get that understanding. Somehow it just works and I thought it was really cool just to do something odd that people would think, yo, what are you doing, Ollie? Please, please don't do this again. But it worked out and I think it's really cool. Um, then we've come, this part, I, I just, I think I was going through like, really with the housey uh the housey phase here and i wanted to make like a, a smooth transition out of the drop because i knew this was a vocal track and the old vocal i had on top of this and it worked really well but um i knew that if i was to get another vocalist which ended up being david i, I could do something with this part um and i didn't actually put his vocal on this part i don't think but it's a, it's a nice way to transition out. It, it shows that a melodic kind of sound, the chords come in here. So with the chords, it makes the transition into the big chords and the break a little bit smoother, you know, rather than just big room chords. It's big room, some chords introduced, then the, the, the main chords. So together, everything sounds like this. <laughs> So it's got that kind of Spotify appeal now. And yeah, I really loved making this part. We've got all the drums from before, but we have to change the bass stabs because the bass notes change now. Uh, so I had to change the, the key of the bass stabs. As you can see. I actually think it's the same chord structure as uh, Tokyo. I think Tokyo was like this kind of chord. Dun, 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 but I've gone dun, dun, dun. So it's just changing it a little bit. Uh, but it's one of my favorite chord structures, to be honest. Uh, and then we have the main bass line, so. was gonna crash there um yeah it's it's a gritty sound I did want a gritty offbeat kind of sound so we've got the main sound there then we've got this one which acts as a sub right it's a re-space but it's got a nice sub within it so it, it, it acts nice as a sub bass very minimal whoa don't look at this uh, I went crazy on the mids and um, frequencies in this and a bit of side chain but hey if it works it works right then we've got together with the kick, I think it sounds pretty nice. The side chain isn't on there. I don't know where the side chain there. Uh, 
hi-hat riser as well here really pushed the boat out with this one let me see if I can find it here so this is a really cool effect that Oliver Heldens used to do in all of his tracks and I thought why not um, and then we get on the breakdown now it this has been way longer than I expected so I'm gonna have to do the breakdown in a video maybe next week but we can go through the um, the build up as well uh, actually no we'll go through drop two and then next time we'll go through the build up and the breakdown because this sorry I talked for so long I didn't realize I would take so long on this um, sec the second drops a lot different <laughs> So let's look at the differences now. I, I wanted to do it different um, because I'm obsessed with side trance, the energy that it brings. If you've seen my sets, I play a lot of it. In my new sound, I'm using a lot of side trance stuff as well. So it, I had to do this because the first drop doesn't really sound like me too much, right? It, it is very different for me. So I wanted to have a little bit familiar familiarity in the second drop. Nailed it. Um, so let's see how I did the bass line. Took the bass line from Throne with, um, oh no it's not actually, this is a Nexus patch, which is literally, you just draw a bass note. It actually has a reverb on it, that reverb's been exaggerated there because of the end of smile. This is it. That's originally what I had, but it just, it wasn't enough man, it just didn't shine through the mix enough, it's quite weak. You know, it's just not all that. So then I added a sub kick to it. Just made sure I ducked off the high end of the thing, of, of the sample, so that I could just use it as a sub. If you struggle to make fat sub bases, take big room kicks, cut the, cut the high end off it and use it as a sub, you know. Another key component is the Mr. Black sound. Dope sound. really adds the mid frequencies to it and then we have the the uh, sound from side to side with gift back also unrevealed I thought it's a cool signature sound to get in there and together it sounds like this but we'll take the lead off To get some side uh, side trance sounds in there as well to make it more authentic. We've got these big drums as well, which I obviously turned off. Why wouldn't I? Then I've got white noise, very subtle sound that you, you only probably just realizing now, but in the mix it, it works. <laughs> wanted this impact to be really big don't know why you can't hear that turned it off for some reason it actually sounds really cool um just gave it a big impact and the switch thing is something that i wanted to do just to, to kind of indicate that something was going to change so I'll go through, you know, the build up and all that uh, next time, but Switch. Switch. what I did with the vocal is added a vocal X layer, which gave it that, because without it, it sounds like this. Switch. Switch. It gives it that gritty vocal effect to it. And then I did some EQ on it, just getting rid of the low end that the vocal X gave. And it, it's, it's a cool switch up, right? Especially when you tell the, the, the crowd it's going to switch. Had to change the melody a little bit just so it would fit with this rhythm and I didn't want it to make it the same, I wanted it to just to be a little bit different. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it, not, el not much else changes there, it was just a subtle little change in the bass lines, added some more theme effects and theme is the theme is side trance so I wanted to get as many side trance sounds in as possible. Yeah, and that's pretty much it, so thanks for watching this one, I hope you enjoyed the first full video on the channel for a long time. Um, 
it feels like I've been recording this for an hour. I'm not sure how long it is, but we're going to do the breakdown and the build-ups next time. And yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week.